Hey guys, it's Fish again, and today's video is about who should you pull in 4.5 patch for character event banner. So in here, I will not talk about the newest type of the banner, which is the Chronicle event banner, because that's another type of the banner itself. But for now, we will just focus on four different characters right now, and character event banner, which is Ito, Chiori, Kazua, and Nebelet. And I will also include like should you pull for the early consolation or the weapon. So let's get started. So let's first put a brand new character, Chiori. Chiori pretty much a relatively good sub DPS character that provides a similar roles like Albedo in Geo teams. She also tend to become better in terms of offensive side, so meaning that she will deal more damage, especially in a single target. Likewise, also Albedo, she pretty much like flexible. She can be paired with any just any Geo team. Especially if you have Geo Construct itself, she will give buff even more so like the character like Ito, Geo MC, Ningguang, something like that that have Geo Construct, it will even buff her more. However, it doesn't mean that I say Navia didn't get buff, but it's just like they that have like Geo Construct will get more than Navia. But other than that, Navia is still pretty much pretty useful with her because it makes Navia team overall also become more offensive. Her playstyle right now, mostly the best one is as a quick swap, as like if we just make any team comp. Because mostly her on field is not really that great because we can say like the infusion and the burst kinda negligible. Overall she pretty much a quite good unit in geo teams as a multi-purpose in geo teams. However, there's couple things that I want to give a notes about this character that I want to address. Of course she is only like two days, but I already have couple of that I taking notes. Which is first Chiori doll, the Tamoto itself. I just realized when the enemy move a little bit too far, the, the doll itself just like stalling, it doesn't even move, it's not chasing like Furina summon itself, so if it's too far, it just stay there, it, it will not even attacking, so it's kinda like feel a waste of DPS, which is I find like it's quite annoying. The other side that I want to add that although Chiori that they kinda like promote her as a character in Geo team that flexible can be on field and off field, but her on field is pretty much not really that great. Basically, her infusion is just way too fast and also her burst is not even amazing that I can say it's not really that super worth to make as an on-fielder. As an off-fielder is good, but as an on-fielder is thought. And lastly that I want to add, although I mentioned that Chiori is pretty much a relatively good character, but I say again, she only could in Joe. Other than that, she pretty much didn't contribute anything. And I already say in the preparation guide, Geo is always not really that favor in-game, so make this character even though she is good. It's not really that important and it's not really kind of contribute much in terms of like your account progression. She is just like feel very whatever. But in I still have my recommendation if you're interested to pull for Chiori. First, if you mostly play in the Geo team, select so like Mono Geo team, like differentiation like Ito, Mono Geo team, or even Navia team that you want to pair to make it offensive, then yeah, you can pull for Chiori itself, especially if you don't have Albedo, that's actually a pretty good choice for you to find another good partner for your Navia itself, let's say. So yeah, you can consider to pull for Chiori. Other than lastly, that I always mention, if you really like her as a character, that if you like, you get attached from the story, then yeah, feel free to pull for her, or maybe you like the gameplay also, feel free to pull for her. And second character is the one and only, Aratakito. Aratakito is relatively good and strong DPS, and specialized in Mono Geo team. With the addition of the Chiori, then Ito got a new compadre, which is Chiori itself, and make him actually even better. Especially with Chiori that can make the construct even better, it can buff directly to Ito itself. And although like you maybe kinda underestimate that he only maybe play in Mono Geo stuff that people mostly don't like it. But actually most of the case, if you have the right team, let's say Ito, Albedo or Chiori right now as an addition, right? Goro C6 if you have and Bennett. Most of the case, if the Spiral Abyss doesn't have any restriction like certain element, Ito can pretty much clear all the content in Spiral Abyss for the 12th floor itself. However, a couple things to note that Ito at C0 may not feel the smoothest in terms of gameplay because you still need to do normal attack to get stacked. It's not like type that you can spam like charge attack all the time at C0. So because of that, it might be not give you the smoothest feeling. Also being Mono Geo itself, because Mono Geo mostly we can say just like a raw power. So his power in order to get upgrade, it's mostly relying on like level, let's say your skill, your weapon, or even like weapon choices. So if you want to like a massive upgrade, you need to put the signature weapon. So it's different like maybe you play Hyper Bloom that you can just stack EM and that's pretty much it. You can ignore some of the skill level. 
so you can save some cost but for ito you need some investment like literally for the levels talent everything you need to improve and even if you want to make the better maybe you pull consolation something like that so yeah it can be a little bit costly and last thing that i want to say about ito that he mostly stuck with one single type of team which the one that i always say that mostly just like ito albedo or chiori goro and Bennett. pretty much mostly that you do it and that you will stuck like almost every time until they release another geo so if you kinda want to play the die first team, then I don't really recommend Ito. In the end, my main recommendation for you to pull for Ito is that because you really like him as a character or the gameplay, like one of the sample, like Ito is literally very funny in terms of event, like the last cooking event with Ayato is just ridiculous funny. Maybe because of that, you really like him and want to pull him. Yeah, feel free. He's still pretty decent as a DPS itself, especially if you have the right team. And for some other niche cases, maybe you're a fan of Mono Geo, then yeah, you pull for Ito. He's actually quite solid as a Mono Geo team. Third character, Kaidahara Kazuha. Kazuha is one of the most universal characters in Genshin Impact. Literally, you can almost put in any team and he can work because he specializes in buffing elemental damage. And we play Genshin mostly about elemental reaction, right? And keep buffing those elemental reaction. So that's why it's actually very useful usually having him. He usually will bring more value or become more important if you want to play like kind of team, let's say in the freeze team, Ayaka freeze team, usually Kazuo is pretty crucial compared to do so cross Kazuo is better. National variation, especially if you pair with child or vaporize variation. And some cases like Taser and Kazuo usually still pretty quiet, give you more value in here because mostly in here the field where Kazuo is shiny. Kazuo's skill also very useful for crowd control. Like it's not as big as Penty, but it's still useful. So buffing at crowd control, that's basically very good for character itself. Also in exploration, using Kazuo is pretty much another quality of life because you can fly a little bit higher. All in all, Kazuo doesn't really have any major downside that I want to mention. But there's a couple things that to note about Kazuo is that Kazuo indeed one of the best character in Genshin Impact. However, since Genshin Impact character roster keep expanding, right now we already have like a lot of different selection character now. It's already from 1 set to 14, that's a lot. And make Kazuo importance of pool will not feel like as significant as before. Because if you just want to talk about the buffer itself, especially lately, we already have a couple of different buffer. That I don't want to say that they replace Kazuo, but it's more like can become a good alternative for you if you don't have Kazuo. So let's say first is Furina. Furina is basically also buffing your elemental damage, even Zio. So it's also like can be alternative if you don't have Kazuo. Another that Shifrus, if you play maybe an electro or pyro related reaction and you have C6 maybe Shifrus, then you can actually use Shifrus without needing any Kazuo anymore and still doing pretty decent job. Another case is Cloud Retainer buffing and plunging so because of that we already have couple of different buff of course they did different thing that Kazuo but it doesn't mean that Kazuo become the center of the attraction right now right now we have more and more selection so my main point in here that don't feel so bad if you end up skipping here or missing him don't feel like you fear of missing out because right now we already have a lot of different selection itself and you can still clear spiral abyss even without Kazuo because we already have like wide range of the character roster right now but I still have my main recommendation for you to pull for Kazuha. So first, if you are relatively a new player, don't really have many character, then yeah, Kazuha is still one of the best candidate for you to pull. I told you right, he is one of the universal character in this game. Another, if you mostly play in freeze team, let's say Ayaka freeze, then Kazuha is still pretty much quite important for you to get. Another that I already mentioned, let's say if you main of child, then getting Kazuo can be another good option or vaporize related stuff, something like that. And lastly, if you're looking for the universal type of character, meaning that this character can be used in most of the like situation or team, then Kazuo is one of them. Or you kind of just find what is considered the best character for you to pull and Genshin Impact. Yeah, then I can say Kazuo is one of them. And the last character is Nuvillet. Nuvillet is very solid main DPS because he is relatively very friendly for a casual and also his gameplay relatively very easy it's just literally a power wash simulator and also it deal a lot of damage cover like big aoe and because of that he's become one of the better dps in a while he is also very flexible in team building works in penny reaction you can play vaporize you can play taser you can play hyper bloom it can works his team variation is actually quiet divers he's also convenient and easy to build because literally you can just Put any HP if you have a bad artifact and it's still pretty much decent. You can check my comparison. It's still pretty much decent if you just decide to put like HP. 
and also he has like couple solid uh, option for free to play weapon literally prototype amber and still relatively good so that's actually very good advantage to become like easy to build and convenient Nivella doesn't really have any major downside I just want to highlight couple of things which is first maybe if you use Nivella first without shield it's a little bit kinda annoying for a while you need to adjust yourself until you're getting used to it but once you're used to it it's actually pretty much doable and pretty easy as to say to not getting interrupted Arena 2 that I want to add notes is that Nivellet is only work as an on-fielder, he is not an off-fielder and also like being mostly main DPS on-fielder itself usually in terms of value in Genshin Impact it's not as important as a support or sub DPS because usually in endgame like a beast we only need like main DPS like how much? 3 or 4 main DPS usually already enough to cover everything in your a piece itself so because of that like usually the importance of main DPS is not as high as sub support or sub DPS but in the end, my main recommendation for you to pull for Nivellet, if you still need a solid main DPS, then sure, pull for Nivellet because he's one of the solid one. Or if you really want a character that can play in different type of team, you really like to try in different team comp, then yes, Nivellet can be one of them because he literally can put in different style of like reaction and it can works. And last section, we will talk about weapon or consolation. So let's start first with the Shiori. So Shiori is actually depends which one your consolation goal is. If you're aiming for C2, then for sure C2 is the best value compared just going for the signature weapon. So because C2 gives you like literally more damage and you already get benefit from C1. And C1 you basically get one more additional doll. So it's pretty much good. However, the argument will come if you choose between C1 or the signature weapon. If you mostly want to upgrade or you want to make like Shiori more compatible with Navia, then I suggest you to go for C1 compared to weapon because C1 it will give you more additional doll which it makes more compatible with Navia itself and of course more damage too so it's kinda improving the quality of life however if you just want to focus on mono geo team or the geo team that already have geo construct so Chiori can fully utilize her kit that means pulling her signature weapon can be better than C1 just because her free to play weapon right now Harbinger down if your HP is below 90% you pretty much doomed you didn't get any effect Cinnabar also pretty rare because it's only event so if you miss that means you missed so getting her weapon can be a good additional too from the quality of life and damage so you can consider that. And for Ito, should you pull for early consolation or signature weapon? Actually it's very depend on your preferences. If you care more to increase your damage, then getting signature weapon the stone slasher can be better than C1. However, if you care more about quality of life, meaning that you can obtain the stack easier so you can trigger more like charge attack and doing less of normal attack so not feeling dragging. Of course, increasing your damage but not as significant as a weapon but this is more like quality of life so you can charge attack more often, doesn't feel so dragging then yeah, choose for C1. As for C2, it's pretty good, give you energy but it's not really as important as the weapon or C1. So if I want to rank weapon, C1, then C2. As for Kazuha, should you pull for early consolation or signature weapon? Same like Ito, it actually depends on your preferences. If you prefer to give buff to your team, then pull for the weapon. But if you prefer in quality of life, meaning in this C1 that after you use your burst, you can skill again. So that's pretty much good and you can get also more energy in here. So pretty good in quality of life, then go for C1. However, if you plan to pull him until C2, then getting C2 is already better than signature weapon. Just because like you get the effect of C1 and C2 also will buff the elemental mastery which is pretty much already good and better than getting the weapon itself. The last one, Nivellet should you pull for early consolation or signature weapon. If you decide to go for the weapon or C1, it actually also depends on your preferences. If you just care about damage increase and getting energy charge easily, then going for the weapon can be your choice. However, you want to get a little bit damage in here and quality of life because his C1 is basically you can get stack easier, increase in damage, that's technically, and also you will get like increased resistance interruption while doing charge attack meaning you will have hard time to get in knockback anymore you don't have to use any shield or you don't need to descend yourself you can just like unga bunga in there and you can still save and yeah getting c1 can be your solution but if you decide to go until c2 then just going until c2 is already better than going for the weapon because you get also the effect from c1 which is pretty nice too but if you ask my preference to rank i still prefer like c2 and after that c1 then weapon will be my last priority so that's pretty much that's it though but ito chiori kazu and nebulet and we'll come to my verdict right now i think you already know what is my verdict if I have to choose between these four characters, I will choose Kazo because I already keep told you that he is the most universal character. That I will feel that it will never get any wrong to just pull for Kazua. So uh, he is actually still very good, very universal, can buff your element. 
pretty useful in any most of the team. But I have a little bit of advice in here, although I already say Kazuo is one of the best core writer, but they got also the next core writer that will come in 4.6 which is Arlecchino. And Arlecchino I believe also one of the most hyped character in Genshin Impact. And then we know that Kazuo already in the second phase, so I have my little bit of advice in here is that don't pull Kazuo on the day of the banner release, but wait a little bit until special program and you see that you maybe like Arlecchino gameplay or not something like that and decide to pull Kazuo starting from there. So pretty much that's it. If you like this video feel free to hit subscribe button and like it. I will see you next time. Bye bye.